this live view, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the first man stepping foot on the moon. Sony launched the Alpha 7 R4. Instagram is deleting accounts. We're going to be launching a class, a masterclass on portrait photography. Sony launched the Alpha 7 R4. Boy, camera brands are really launching models very quickly. I still remember that was like two years ago when we have the R3. Now what's interesting about the R4, it's a 61 megapixel resolution camera. And during the launch, the Sony executives on stage are calling it a almost medium format. The Alpha 7 R Mark IV is a full frame camera that delivers medium format level image quality. Is it almost medium format or they're claiming it's medium format resolution? Well, that's a joke. It's not. Let me explain why. Because regardless what it is, it's still a full frame sensor. This is how a full frame sensor looks like. It's 36 mm times 24 mm. Now let's look at a typical medium format camera, a phase one that's clocking in at what? 53 times 40. Compare the size of these two sensors. Let's look at sensor size as rooms. Now, we're going to have six people in this room and six people in this room too. But notice that this room is smaller. So which means that it's going to be noisier in a smaller room with the same number of people. Now let's not forget that if somebody were to fart in this room, a small room, then everybody's going to smell that part. Well, that's noise. When you have so much of megapixel in a small sensor, packed into such a small sensor, you tend to have noise compared to the medium format larger sensor. Now talking about medium format, it's not exactly the size of the sensor, this term medium format. Anything that is larger than your full frame sensor and smaller than your large sensor, large, large format sensor, it's medium format sensor. So that's why it varies from brand to brand. So what does it mean when you have a camera, a full frame sensor with so much of megapixel in there? That means if you are a studio photographer that shoots with a lot of studio lights and light is not your problem, you're going to get very sharp and crisp, high resolution photo. But if you're a natural lighting photographer, low light, it's going to give you a lot of noise. So that's it. That is why we have the Alpha 7 R4. R here stands for resolution, which means that it's pretty good in resolution for photo shoot. And if you see the S, that means it's for sensitivity. That's the naming convention that Sony has been using. So what if you have Alpha 7, 4, no R and no S? Well, that's a bit like me, pretty decent in everything. Decent in resolution, decent in sensitivity, and good in nothing actually. So much for naming conventions. So Sony is launching this in September, and the price is expected to be US dollar 3,500. Oh, not to be left out. Nikon rumors got a news that says that Nikon will be making the Z8 available soon. It's a rumor, but I'm not surprised. And accordingly, the sensor comes from Sony and it's supposed to be a 60 over megapixel camera. So no price for guessing. It could be the same sensor as the A7R4. Heard from Canon? Is Canon launching anything? No? In the last live view, we celebrated the 500 years since the passing of the great genius Leonardo da Vinci, the great cousin of Leonardo DiCaprio. This live view, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the first man stepping foot on the moon. Yes, it has been 50 years since 21st, no, 20th of July, 1969. Now, that's quite interesting information I want to share with you. The lunar landing module landed on 20th of July and six hours later, Neil Armstrong, the first man who landed on the moon, step onto the moon on 21st. Wow, can you imagine in that cramped space for six hours? 
Now, this man landing on the moon is not without controversies. There are a lot of people out there saying that it's staged and it's faked by the US government, by NASA, it's all movie makers making it real. There are a few proofs that point to the fact that the lunar landing was real. Now, there's a guy on the internet called Adam Ruins Everything. Looking at the shadow, look at this, look at this picture. You notice that the shadows are very dark, consistent with what I always teach in advanced flash photography. When the shadows are this dark, that means the light are very bright. That means the light source is really, really bright. That's one. Second thing, look at all these shadows here. They are consistently parallel in one direction, which means that the light source is very far. If you were to put a light source near to a blocking object, notice how they flare up into different directions. But as you move the light source further away from the subjects, you notice that the lines, the shadows, are more parallel now. And as you move further away, you notice that the lights become dimmer and hence the shadow not so dark. But look at the moon landing shadows. They are really dark shadow, which means that the light source must be very bright. So back in 1969, there is no light source, artificial light source that mankind can make that can be so bright and can be so big to be that far away that it has to be only the sun. So it's not a man-made light source. Since 1969, Americans have placed six flags, American flags on the moon, out of which, how many is still standing? Five is still standing. That's because there's no wind. <laughs> How's that? And the third thing that's quite interesting is that the lunar landing team left behind a little device on the moon that if you were to use a long-range special kind of laser pointer, it will reflect off this device. So if you have not landed on the moon, how the hell does that shit get there? Well, if there's anything interesting that intrigues me the most is that it's one of those adventure and journey my man, which is marked by a lot of interesting photos. Many of us would have seen landmark photos like this. Everybody knows about these photos. But here are some collection of photos rarely seen and pretty interesting about man's journey to the moon. Enjoy yourself. And talking about enjoying yourself, Omega, the official watch that brings man to the moon and records time, that's how we know he landed on the 20th and stepped on the 21st, is celebrating this journey. And by doing that, they're having an exhibition available in Pavilion, the shopping mall in Kuala Lumpur from the 5th of August to the 11th of August. Be there, I'm gonna be there. Well, how did Omega get involved in the space mission? Simple, NASA sent out requests for quotations to a few watch brands and only four responded. Omega was one of them. These brands are then required to send to NASA three wristwatch chronographs and each one of these will be required to pass 10 environmental tests. These are extreme tests that put the watches through 93 degrees centigrade of hot temperature to as low as negative 18 degrees centigrade. And only one watch brand comes out victorious in all the environments and pass all the tests. And that's the Omega. Now it's more than just a watch because if all the digital timers and instrument of communication breaks down, the astronauts were trained to use their watch because the Apollo and Gemini astronauts were then trained to use their watch as a surviving tool to ensure that they come back to Earth. That was how important Omega watches were for the astronauts. Oh hey, we're going to be launching a class, a master class on portrait photography. And also one class, you know, one of the favorite questions that YouTube and everybody all over the world getting started with photography, they like to ask is that what camera should I own and what settings should I use? We are coming out with a course, an e-learning course, exactly just for that. You know, the interesting thing is that I mentioned about the landing on the moon and how much the shadow can actually tell you about the property of the light source. Visit this website. It's our advanced e-learning flash photography course. You want to subscribe to this course. It's a masterclass 
and it teaches you the big five of lighting, which means that if you master this big five, from coverage to reflection, you're going to be able to light up anything with any light source and any number of lights. I'll see you in the next episode. Oh man, this is quite interesting. Instagram is deleting accounts and some of these accounts can have up to 13 million followers. Wow, there you go. Insta not so famous now, aren't you? Well, that's the funny thing. The claim is that they are deleted because they are in violation of terms and condition of Instagram. That's the scary thing about social media, right? You can spend a lifetime building a YouTube channel, do a lot of photography tutorials, do a lot of live view, and then next thing you know, you violate something and then you get deleted. One of my friends had this problem, Yi Chong. He's got like 5,000 over subscribers. And what's interesting is that you got to respect copyright because some of these Instagram accounts are actually just posting a lot of memes, right? Offending a lot of people. So be careful. Social media is a double-edged sword. Did you just let one rip? Oh, shit. Can you now stop farting on set, Lucas? <laughs>